Welcome to Fundamentals of Faith from Love Walk Christian Center. Hey Amen. Good morning, everybody. I was mid-drink, and they were like, start. Action. No, I'm just kidding. Hey Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? Good, 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 good. Well, we're going to pray real quick, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. You are worthy of all the honor, God, all our dignity. You're worthy of it, Jesus. We're not embarrassed to serve you. We're not embarrassed to worship you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and do whatever you want to this day. Come and do whatever you want to, Jesus. This service is yours. Our lives are yours. This moment, yours. This earth is yours, Jesus. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and turn in, your, in our Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to be reading in the New Living Translation. That's what, I, that's what I love. And really quick, before like, we, we dive into this, I just want to say, like, I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but we're very blessed in this house. We have two pastors that do not study their messages together, and yet their messages, like especially right now, are very parallel, even though they're talking about two separate like things. And we're going to get, a, hopefully, a little bit into that today, um, kind of what God was ministering to me yesterday. Um, I find, like, if I try to study for a message, I get nowhere, but if I just seek him first, which is what it's about, then he gives me what I need. It's not about fancy words. It's about, it's about Jesus. It's about him. It's about the move of the Holy Spirit. It's what we need. So, um, so yeah, amen. All right, so tonight, or tonight, today what we're going to be talking about, and the title of this message is In Me As It Is In Heaven. I normally don't have a title, but this morning God was like, call it In Me As It Is In Heaven. So I was like, praise God. So let, let's just start reading uh, Matthew 6, 1, actually. It says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. It doesn't say you'll lose your reward when you get to heaven. It says you'll lose your reward from your Father in heaven. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to lose my reward. And... Um, and we'll keep reading in a second. Just so everybody knows, this is all about motive. It's all about your heart. It's all about your reason and purpose. Because in Matthew 5, Matthew 5, 17, is it 17? No, uh, let's just read Matthew 5, 13 real quick. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. 14, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, ready, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. It's about motives, right? So it's not, when, in Matthew 6, when he's saying, don't let your right, left hand know what your right hand is doing, it's all about the heart and your purpose for it. And obviously, we don't have the ability to, like, have people blowing trumpets and stuff. But how many of you guys, like, seen people give away things, and they got to not only record it, but, like, it's, it's all about them. It's selfish. In high school, um, not at my school, but there was another school. Um, this guy posted, like, the video on Twitter. It got, like, a lot of clout blew up because he gave this kid a pair of shoes. I gave a kid a pair of shoes in high school, too. But, like, I didn't blow it up because it was, it's not about me. The guy was in need of a pair of shoes. Like, you don't have to record that. Now, I, some, some videos, and it's all, like, it's not really for you to judge what their heart is and stuff. But I think it's very evident. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about blowing trumpets right now in Matthew 6. Like, if somebody came in here right now and, like, burm, 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 Pastor Ezra, we got you a pair of Jordans. It's going to be like, dude, that wasn't about me. That was about you. But thank you for the Jordans. No, I'm just saying. Uh, let's keep reading. Matthew 6. Um, 
Verse 2, when you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets. Uh, let's skip down. Verse 3, but when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your heavenly Father, who sees everything, will reward you. It's all about your heart. And it's going to go on. We're going to read about it in a second, about praying. It's about your heart. It's just like worship. And God, yesterday, as I was like, In my quiet time with him, man, I just began to weep because, like, how many times are we in service and we lift our hands out of guilt in worship because, oh, I got to do this. Like, it's almost like reverse, like, embarrassment, I guess, if that makes sense. It's like we're embarrassed, like, oh, man, I'm I'm in this position. I should, I got to raise my hands or I got to clap for worship or whatever. So people will look at you and be like, oh, man, they're a worshiper. It's like people crying at the altar when they get saved and they don't really feel anything or crying at the altar so they can put on a show so people feel bad for them or or they, if I don't cry, I'm not going to get the intention from the pastor. It's about the heart, man. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. It's what's in here. That's what he's looking at. Let's keep reading. Uh, verse 5, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. Now, our call is to go preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick. So it's not talking about going, don't, don't go out and pray for people. It's talking about don't go make a show of it. Let's represent Christ well. I'm sorry, if, this, if you see a guy who's not a believer in Walmart, and God says, go pray for him because he has a headache, and you go ask him if he has a headache, if you go, you're not representing Christ well. I'm sorry, you're not. Now, if they manifest that way, that's another story. But for you to do that like that, you're not representing Christ well. You're making a show of him, and that's why people don't like Christians. Because the same guy making the show is going to get in the car and flip off people while he's driving. It's about the heart, man. It's about Jesus being real in you. It doesn't matter if he's real in general. It's being real in you because you're the only Jesus they're going to see. Because guess what? They're not seeking. They're not knocking. But their heart, their innermost being is crying out for truth. And that's why we have this fake thing going on right now is my truth, your truth. There's no such thing as my truth or your truth. It is his truth because he is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. It's not your truth. Yes, you have opinion. You have perspective. That's all fine. But at the end of the day, what is the fact? I can say this is wood all day. You like this nice wood podium right here? It was handcrafted. This is not wood. This is metal. I can paint it wood and it can look wood. It is never going to be wood. It is metal. And the fact is, is your version of the gospel is not the gospel. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ and nothing else. And if we're not going to follow him, we're going to fall off. Let's keep reading. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your father in private. Then your father, who sees everything, will reward you. If you can't worship in private... And if all you can do is worship in public, and you're not worshiping in private, and if all you can do is worship in private, but you can't publicly worship him, then you're embarrassed of him. It's about the heart. It doesn't matter. He is worthy of your dignity. He is worthy of it. If you are the most dignified person and you don't do anything out of what you think is to be proper, Jesus is worthy of that. And I'm telling you, when Jesus becomes real to you, the Wall Street broker will fall on his knees and worship the Lord because it's about him. It's not about you. It's about our obedience to him. It's about, let's keep reading. When you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before 
you ask him. Even before you ask him. That's pretty cool. Your father knows what you need before you know what you need. So what we're about to read right here, see, if we pray his will being done in our life, then when it doesn't look right, one of two things is going on. Either you're not living in his will, or you're so distracted by everything else that you don't realize that you are in his perfect will. And Pastor Adrian preached on Wednesday night, stop worrying about that. Just worry about being obedient to him. And it's not even something you worry about. It's literally seeking him. That's it. Seek him first. And we'll get into that in a second. Seek him first and he, all these things will be added. Let's keep reading. Now we all know this prayer. Now I said this last time, but I didn't have very long to talk about it. Jesus wasn't saying pray this out. Like we've memorized this. Football teams pray it out. They pray it out every day on the radio, all together. It's not that it's a bad prayer, but literally we've turned the Lord's Prayer. I said last time, this is not the Lord's Prayer because Jesus had no sin in him. It doesn't say in the Bible it's the Lord's Prayer. They added that as a pretext, the Lord's Prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer. But Jesus would never pray, forgive me of my sins, because he didn't sin. Even when he bore our sins, he didn't say, forgive me of my sins, because guess what? He was still sinless. He took on our sin. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, I don't believe he was just talking about the people that were mocking him. I think he was talking about us. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He was bearing our shame. He was bearing our guilt. The king of glory, the one who hung the stars in space, who laid the foundations of the earth, bore our sin and shame. It's something that none of us could ever do. We try to do it. We try to hold the cares of the world. When our friends or our family make mistakes, we try to bear those things, but you can never truly bear them because Jesus already bore them in a way that you never could understand or explain. You don't know what heartbreak is. Only Jesus truly knew what heartbreak was when he bore our sin and shame because I believe he not only felt the pain of being those people, but I believe he felt the pain of the sins being done unto him in those moments. He felt as the murderer and the murdered at the same time. He felt like the raped and the rapist at the same time. Those sins came on Jesus and he bore them for us. He took on all of it for us so that we don't ever have to feel the way. Well, then why, Pastor Ezra, did this happen to me? We live in a cursed world, man. We live in a cursed world, and it's not God's fault. It's not God's fault. Just like God doesn't send people to hell. People send themselves to hell. Let's keep reading. Our Father in heaven, real quick, want to recognize that is praise. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. That's what the angels sing. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. John 4, we're not going to turn there. Jesus tells the Samaritan woman, the Lord is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and truth. When you really worship, you are begin to go into prayer because you are communicating with God, talking to him. Okay? May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You start praying and agreeing with John the Revelator. Revelation 22, 20. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Give us today the food we need. He's our daily bread. John 6, 35. And you guys can write these down. We're not going to read them. And forgive us our sins as we 
have forgiven those who sin against us. First John one nine, and then also uh, Matthew six fourteen for those scripture references. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Does anybody know how to pray that? How to pray the Lord's Prayer without praying the Lord's Prayer? Brother Roy, can you can you take like 30 seconds to pray that out? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's keep reading. If you forgive those, 14, right? Perfect. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable in the shelves so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth. This is the only reward they will ever get. I don't know about you. I don't want to be just rewarded by men. I want my reward to come from him and him alone. Period. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. Then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. Let's be good representations of Christ. Good, true representation of Christ. What does that look like? Seek him first. Seek him first. Let's keep going. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. That's why I don't, I mean, let's keep reading. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will Will also be. Let's read that again. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So, if being seen is your treasure, then that's going to be your goal. So, when you give, you'll give because you want to be seen. When you worship, you'll Worship because you want to be seen. When you pray, you'll pray because you want to be seen. And I'm not talking about seen by God. I'm talking about you want others to see you. If your treasure is money, then everything you do will be with the purpose of how can I make more? How can I do more? How can I, what can I do? You'll see everything is a way to get money. If your treasure is Jesus, then everywhere you'll go, you'll be looking at, how can I be like Jesus? Because it's about him. If it, We all say, like, oh, I'm living to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. If you just live for him, you'll hear that. I Like, we all have this, like, and I think... I think it's everyone, really. We have this, like, desire to be told, I'm proud of you. You're good enough. We have this, like, maybe built into us from when we're kids, when we're little kids, to be accepted. But we've been accepted by the blood of Jesus. So it doesn't matter. And I, and I think, I mean, I can't speak for everybody. I know for myself, I remember when I graduated high school, I... um. I took a job that I shouldn't have taken, quit the job, and then I didn't have a job for like two months, and I really wanted a job. And like, I was so overwhelmed with the fact that I felt like my parents weren't proud of me. 
And so, like, I, like, wanted to hear I'm pleased with you or I'm proud of you. And I wasn't hearing that, and rightfully so. I mean, I was being a couch potato. But <laughs> whatever. Nonetheless, um, I was, like, living for that. When you live for that, like, you hear that, and it only lasts for a moment. It's just like anything. You win something, it lasts for a moment. When people, when the, when NFL teams win the Super Bowl, it lasts for a moment. But when the next season starts, they're not the champs anymore. Now it's on to the next one. It's on for the next approval. But you've been bought by the blood of Jesus. So if it's just about him, then let's make our motives just about him. Why am I doing this? It's for Jesus. What's my purpose right now? Jesus. What do you have planned today? I don't know. I'm going to worship Jesus. And that literally looks like your day-to-day, but with a heart focused on him. Right? Because unless you're called to, like, drop everything and go do missions right now, like, you still got to work on Monday morning. Well, tomorrow's a holiday. Some of you guys might not have to work. Tuesday. Tuesday morning. You guys got to... You guys got to work, right? But are you working for him or are you working for your company? Are you working for your boss? Are you working to please them? Man, if I could just get promoted. I love my grandpa, man. Anytime I would call and complain about my job or something, he's like, promotion comes from the Lord. And I'm like, man, you're right. You know? But in the moment, it's like, you don't understand. It doesn't matter. It's about him. I'm not working for my job. I'm not working for my boss. I'm working for him. I'm working for Jesus. And if your heart becomes that, you'll find promotions. And when you're supposed to be promoted and they don't promote you, they're going to be troubled. They're going to be troubled for not being obedient to the Lord, even if they're not Christians. Literally, I'm talking about, like, when you stop worrying about you and have a heart on him, because Jesus said, bless those who curse you. That's something else my grandpa told me. I was complaining about someone. I started praying for them. God moved them all the way to the night shift. I'm, I'm serious. You know, like, I had had about enough, and God moved into the night shift. And guess what? All I I shut up and I said, "Bless them, Lord. I bless them. I bless them. Teach me." Second part: Teach me to love them, like you love them, because that takes me out of the equation. Because if teach me to love them like you love them, that takes me completely out of the equation. I'm not in it anymore. So anything I'm doing, it's Jesus doing it. I'm going to I'm going to step into Jesus shoes. I'm going to put Jesus clothes on. Do not show up to work in some robes, guys. Come on. I'm just saying I have to say it. Like someone might do that. People take things literally sometimes. People come into the church with chop their hands off and stuff. Like I he told me to cut off my hand if it offends me. I'm serious. People do some crazy stuff. So I just, I had to clarify, don't show up to work if you're supposed to wear suits. And you, has anybody seen, what's that movie? Evan Almighty. And he like, turns in. anyways, that's not the point. I don't know if that's, that might have some bad stuff in it. Don't go watch that. Um, let's keep reading. 22. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if that light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. He's saying it's better for you to recognize that, man, I'm, I'm bad, I'm living in darkness, than to think you're living right when you're not living right. And there's people that they actually, like, believe they're in the right. Like, they don't read their Bibles. 
And the ones that do twist words. Jesus loves everyone, but he does not want you to live a life of sin. That's just, that's straight. That's how it is. He does not want you, you cannot say, I'm doing this, but I'm, I'm living a life of Christ. You cannot be a drug dealer and be like, man, I'm, I'm good, man. Me and the Lord are good. No, you're not. No, you're not. Jesus didn't sit with those people. He sat with the ones who knew how dark they were. The ones that thought they had light in them, he called them a brood of vipers. I don't want to be called a brood of viper. Literally, I've prayed prayers like, Jesus, crucify the Pharisee in me. Crucify the Pharisee in me. Wherever there's, wherever there's tables, wherever I've lended and rented out my heart to the enemy, come flip those tables. I want to live wholeheartedly for you, Jesus, nothing else. So come crucify the Pharisee in me. Come flip the tables on my heart. What about the tax collectors that I've allowed in? Because sometimes I think we, we become numb we become numb to the things we've allowed in us where we think they're okay and Jesus is not okay with them. And we've muted the grieving of Holy Spirit in our lives. I'm telling you, you he, he's in you and the first few times you'll be grieved but you keep doing something over and over again, you're not going to feel that anymore. You become numb to it. You become numb to it. And all of a sudden, now you think something's okay. And it might be something that's like, I'm not even talking about what we in our minds have this crazy idea of sin. I'm talking about a TV show. Turn it off. Turn it off. It's been a week now. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Finally, you might not be hearing turn it off anymore. But you know what else you might not be hearing? Come spend time with me. You might not be hearing that anymore. And then you get it in your Bible and, God, why can't I hear you anymore? You don't talk to me. And then we have Christians writing songs like, even though he's not talking, he's still there. It's like, no, he's talking. You're not listening. I'm sorry. People are writing songs like that. Like, that's garbage. He's always talking. You're not listening. I'm listening. No, you're not. You put in your earplugs and went to sleep a long time ago. And he's been there knocking and beckoning the whole time. He's been knocking and beckoning with his blood the whole time, and he wants to baptize you in fire daily. But you'd rather be baptized by Netflix and the things of the world. Baptize. It's immerse. Submerse yourself. If you submerse yourself in different things, you are being baptized by whatever that is. And it's on you. Bill Johnson says, the Holy Spirit is in me for me, but he's on me for you. I think a lot of times we have the Holy Spirit in us for us, and we're good, but we have Netflix on us for us. We have this on us for us and for you. And so when I see you, you're talking about sports. Now I'm just talking about sports, and we never get into the Lord. I'm not saying you can't talk about sports, and we talk about shoes or whatever it is, and it just stays there it doesn't go past that. Ministry doesn't happen. Jesus isn't exposed. And we leave feeling empty, and we wonder why. It's because we haven't fed our spirit in months or years, weeks. And I'm telling you, if you live a life in the spirit, you go a day without filling your spirit, and you're going to feel empty. Because he is knocking. Pastor Phyllis said it, uh, Revelation 4, it, it, he's... That's not a salvation message. He's talking to the church. He is knocking on the door of your heart. Beckoning, let me in. Let me in. His love for you is that great. God's love for us is that great that he literally never stops knocking until we let him in. I don't know about you. I don't want to grow numb to 
the voice of God. I don't want to put him on mute. Because at the end of the day, his voice is all that matters. And, and I'm telling you guys, our world is becoming so dark. There's people I know that were raised in church and stuff, and they literally have said, like, you know what? I know I'm going to hell. So what? I'm going to do what I want to do. You don't understand eternity, man. You think it's just 70 years and you're just going to go rot in a grave and that's it. That's not how it works, man. It's not just hot in hell. It's not just going to be Texas heat times two. Like, it, you don't want to be there. And people have said that, and that, that hurts me so much because it's like, man, where have we missed it? Where have we missed it? And we split up denominations and we have different, oh, well, Catholics here and this here. Like, let's just follow Jesus. If it's not in here, let's just cast it aside, okay? And let's, let's, let's do this. Because this, at the end of the day, is all that matters. That's it. Him. I was in, I got to, to minister to the kids back there, which is a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot different than back here. I got like about 10 minutes of attention span, and then we got to go play outside or something. So I got I to gotta really punch home in those 10 minutes, because those 10 minutes are what matters. And we're back there, and some of the kids didn't know if they are going to heaven or not. So guess what? I got to, and, and it was crazy. It, was, it wasn't crazy. It was cool, because I didn't know what I was going to preach that night. I mean, I I. It was funny, like, for that specific message, I put more time into trying to figure out what I was going to preach to these kids in a week than I've done for most of my other stuff. I'm like, God, I got to talk to them. What, what am I going to say? Like, and I'm not like, I wasn't stressed. I was just like, Lord, show me, show me, show me. And um, so he tells me, you know, it's in, I think, Second Peter. Um, God has not given us a spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound mind. Second Timothy, my bad. Peter's cash care. Anyways, not the point. Um, so, I um, so I open up with that and I I minister that for a moment and then all of a sudden somehow we get into the topic of they don't know if they're going to heaven or not. And so I'm like, okay. And they're like, well, are you scared? Yeah, I'm afraid, terrified. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Like, if I would have tried to preach something else, like we wouldn't have gotten into this and and these kids would have gone home with that same thought of, I don't know if. I die right now whether I'm going to heaven. And what's crazy is is these young kids, I don't think they don't know where they're going to heaven or hell at the time because of, like, sin. Like, some of us were older, and, like, if we've had those thoughts, like, oh, I'm just a dirty sinner, da 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 that's why I don't know. Like, they just legit didn't know, like, whether I'm going. So we lead them through prayer and explain everything. And it was great. It was great. They, I mean, it was, like, four of them. And now they, like, they know they're going to heaven. They know they're saved. They know that Jesus is in them. And that's what, like, we're supposed to do. And it was simple. And it made me think, it's, it could be that simple in here. It can be that simple, especially out there. So I just shared a little verse with them. It, it's so simple. It's just Jesus loves you. And, yes, you will have, like, you're challenging people, like the people that say, man, I'm going to hell. I know it. I'm just going to live the way I'm living. Like, those people, I've been especially praying Especially since yesterday, actually. Jesus, show me how to minister to these people. Because they need you. They actually know they need you. But they've so bought in. They, they're not even, they're not what Jesus is talking about here. If they think they're light, um, how great is that darkness? Like, they're just dark and they're okay with it. They're okay with it. Now, on the positive side, I don't think that darkness is as dark as the ones that think that they're okay, that they're light. They know they're in need of a Savior. So, you people that pray, be in prayer that not only, because I guarantee there's people like that in your lives. So, start praying, Jesus, show me how to minister to them. And I, I bet you it's rooted in, teach me to love them like you love them. Teach me to love them like you love them. See, his love is kind. It's not nice. 
His love is kind. It's not nice. There's a difference from being kind and nice. Being nice is doing something so somebody else will like you. Even if you like them and it's out of your heart, oh, that was a nice thing to do. There's nothing wrong with being nice, but it is not Jesus. It's good, but it's not Jesus because it's in the motives and it's rooted in, if I'm nice to them, they'll be nice to me. And if I'm nice to them, then this will take place and I can get this promotion if I'm nice to my boss, if I do this. But if I'm kind like Jesus, then I will be putting his shoes on and putting his robe of righteousness on. And so when I tell someone, sorry, you're wrong, it will be done out of love, not out of myself, and it will be done in kindness. A parent disciplining their kid with love is done in kindness. It's not nice. I'm sorry. I don't, it was not nice. I didn't enjoy it. Nice is something enjoyable. Kind is not always enjoyable, but it always comes from him, and it's always done in love. Now, um, real quick, let's just go down to verse 33, and then I got to go somewhere with this. Um, Matthew 6, 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. And We always say that. I want you to realize something. There is no kingdom without a king. A lot of us Christians, and I'm not just talking here in this body. I'm talking Christians as a whole. We seek his kingdom. We seek the glory. Come with your glory, Lord. Come with your glory. Instead of saying, come, Lord Jesus, come, because he is the glory. His kingdom. Oh, I've sinned. I need grace. He is grace. He is the mercy. He is the healing, because he is the healer. He is the redeemer. He's the forgiver. Seek the king. Seek the king. Christians are so busy seeking the kingdom. I'm seeking the kingdom, but you're never getting ahead because you're seeking the kingdom. You're not seeking the king. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. We're so busy on seeking the things in the kingdom. Oh, if gold dust could fall or feathers could fall or, or this or that. But what if Jesus just showed up? Wouldn't that be cool? And he loves us so much that he brings the gold. And he does those things. But how much better would it be if Jesus just showed up? Like, forget the gold. I don't care if gold shows up. What if Jesus just shows up? What if he just shows up right now and we just go into a holy hush for 10 hours? And he speaks to us and dines with us and dwells among us. And his presence comes in. Jesus the man walking in the room. Not an aura, not this glow. Oh, church was great today. We had gold dust, man. It, did it last? Can you sell it and give to the poor? Can you sell it and build another church building? Can you sell it and fund the gospel? Let's have an encounter with Jesus instead that lasts a lifetime. Let's have an encounter with Jesus that lasts a lifetime. Uh, some of you guys have heard of Reinhard Bonnke. I heard something, so this is really cool. I was listening to a sermon last night, and it was really cool because I found out who the guy was who told Reinhard Bonnke this. But I was listening to, not listening, I was just scrolling through my Instagram, actually, and a video of Reinhard Bonnke came up, and he was like, uh, people congratulate me and, and say, man, Reinhard, uh, you know, how have you kept the fire burning for so long? You, you're, you know, you're, you've been a man on fire. How have you kept the fire burning for so long? He said, you're wrong. I haven't kept the fire burning. He is the flame that keeps me burning. He is the flame that keeps me burning. He is the fire that keeps me burning. And his flame never dies out. So if you are not on fire, it's because you are not plugged into him. And you are not connected to him. Because you're being baptized in the world instead of being baptized by his fire. Now, I got about six minutes, and I want to go into this just for a second. Yesterday, I'm in my time with the Lord. I'm reading this, what I was just was reading to you guys, Matthew 6. And I'm 
Lord, I want to seek you first. What do I need to do? Like how I, I, I want to seek you first wholeheartedly. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything else. I just want to seek you first, Jesus. So whether that's in ministry, whatever, like I want it to be about you, Jesus. And he said this to me, and I think this is for the body of Christ. He said, get back to my blood and body. Get back to my blood and body. And I began to weep. And I repented and asked the Lord to forgive me for forsaking his holy communion. Communion is not bread and crackers and, and juice. It is dining with Jesus, the Christ, the holy anointed one. So I said, Father, forgive me for forsaking your holy communion. Forgive me for forsaking this because it hasn't been about your blood and body. We can say it's about Jesus, it's about Jesus. But when we come to church more concerned about healing than Jesus showing up, it is not about Jesus. It's about you. When we come to church more concerned about how many people are going to come, it is not about him, it's about you. Numbers are not the win. He's the win. If nobody shows up but Jesus does, who cares? Because there's more churches with hardly anyone in it where Jesus is showing up than there is with packed out auditoriums, preaching a feel-good message, that you leave feeling good, but nothing has changed, and Jesus wasn't the focus of the message. An old testimony of what the Lord did for somebody was the message, wasn't Jesus. If Jesus isn't preached, it is not Christian. If Jesus is not preached, it is not Christian. And I'm not saying let's forsake the Old Testament. No. The Old Testament speaks all about Jesus. But if Jesus is not preached, it is not Christian. Christian means Christ-like. So if it's not about him, then it's not Christ-like. It's a false gospel. Now some of you guys are like, oh, I knew those prosperity preachers. You know what? There's people labeled as prosperity preachers that preach more about Jesus than the ones that you listen to. They labeled prosperity preachers. No, they, uh, they discovered that the word works. So they do what Jesus said. They do what Jesus said do. And they're more in love with the Lord. And your judgment is not hurting them, it's hurting you. And you know what? Let's get back to bless them, Lord. Teach me to love them like you love them. And I'm talking about for myself, the preachers that I hear that I don't agree with, the ones that are preaching blasphemy. Bless them, Lord. Teach me to love them like you love them. I'm going to shut my mouth and not have an opinion. Because as soon as my opinion gets involved, I'm not being like Christ. I'm not saying correction shouldn't happen. I'm not saying some of them shouldn't lose their pulpits. I'm saying, Jesus, teach me to love them like you love them. I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm not going to say anything negative about them. Because guess what? They're anointed. And whether they're using that anointing or not, they're in a place. Their position is anointed. Whether they should be in that spot or not. Their position is anointed, and so it's not my place to touch them. And guess what? Let, let me take that just a little bit further. Your brother or sister in Christ is anointed. Stop touching them. Teach me to love them like you love them. And the ones that aren't your brother and sister in Christ, spread the gospel. Stop worrying about how much you can't stand them. Oh, they talk about this at work. Love them. Love them. But they're gay. Love them. Love them. Jesus does. He loves them a whole lot. Amen? Amen. I love you guys. Um, it's about his blood and body. Let's get back to that. I encourage you guys, take communion at home. And it's not about a ritual of crackers and juice. It is, Jesus, I am communing with you. So if like, and especially for the people that have a lot of time, if you're just going to grab some crackers and juice and do a two-minute little ceremony at your house or whatever, don't bother. It's about your life going back to the blood and body. Amen?
Let's seek him first. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your holy presence here. God, we give this service over to you, Jesus. Come and do what you want to tonight. Today, tonight, God, we thank you that your presence comes in. That every heart here would be penetrated by your love and kindness. And that we would realize that nothing else matters but you, Jesus. That as we go about our lives, that it would be for you, Jesus. When we walk into the store, when we walk into work, when we walk home, when we're by ourselves, that it, we would live a life that pleases you, a life of seeking you first. God, we thank you for your blood and body. We remember you, Jesus. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to partner with us, please visit our website at lovewalkcc.org. Or you can reach us by mail at 13319 Wallaceville Road, Houston, Texas, 77049. Remember, continue to walk in the extravagant love of Christ.